Hey, hey, I'm Shay Warner, and you are listening to Casual Cattle Conversations. If you are ready to explore different management practices and focus on improving your operation and the beef industry, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited you are listening. Hey, hey, folks, it is Shay here, and let me tell you, I am just over the moon for this podcast episode. And that is because August 16th marks five years of casual cattle conversations. Now, for those of you who have been my day one listeners, can you believe it? I know I think back to my 19 year old self, almost 20, and I was sitting in my parent or in, I was in my parents' house. It was my bedroom that I grew up in. And, uh, I was editing last minute. I didn't know what a hosting provider was. I didn't have a logo. I thought I could upload it on Facebook and then I couldn't. And it was almost midnight by the time I finally got it up there. And it was just crazy to think that that very first episode, which was with my own dad about how he and my mom started their ranch, um, has now transitioned into something so much greater. And so with that, I really want to share my five biggest lessons I've learned about the beef industry in the past five years, just because not only has podcasting allowed me to have a flexible business and income stream while I work on the ranch, it does so much more than that. It has really been a continuous learning approach for me. Um, It's something where I knew I always wanted to be a continuous learner, but like grad school, PhD, traditional education past my undergrad wasn't what I wanted when it came to education. So being able to start the podcast, host Ranch Reminds, and be a part and see all of that is just truly amazing and has connected me to so many people. And I want to share some of my top five takeaways that I've gained from that experience. So starting right off, number one, it's going to take all kinds of kinds. And I say this because sometimes as an industry, I feel like we don't work together very well. We are very polarized. Um, I think the country in general can be very polarized. And in my heart, I don't know that the majority of people are that polarized so much as the polarized people are the smaller amount, but they're the loudest. And maybe I'm wrong. That's just a feeling. I have nothing to back that up. But with that, I think it's important to remember that it is going to take all kinds of kinds, all kinds of producers, all kinds of supporters, all kinds of stories, all kinds of people to create beef demand, utilize the land to the best in the best way possible, and to get others involved. So an example of why I say it's going to take all kinds of kinds is a few days before recording this, I spent four days, well, three and a half, four days in Denver at the Prime Partners event. And what this event was, was it brought together 15 cattle producers who all have different backgrounds, diverse operations. No two of us really fit into the exact same bucket, which was really fun. So there were 15 cattle producers and then there were 15 health dietitian, nutrition and cooking experts. And these experts, while a couple of them had beef or somewhat agriculture backgrounds, a majority of them did not. I mean, there was even one person who had never seen a cow in real life before, not even driven past one. And we, as cattle producers, got to work together to address some of the questions that they had about the beef industry, raising cattle and gaining a better understanding of that. But on the flip side, we got to learn from them about what do they think about beef? What are their concerns? What are the concerns of their clients? And going back to the original statement or what I've learned is that it's going to take all kinds of kinds that was really just reiterated because different people on 
different sides. I don't like the word sides, but that's what comes to mind. So we're going to say we're able to connect with each other and through that personal connection, through that connection with each other's story, trust was built and demand for beef and trust in beef and beef cattle producers was established or increased. All these people loved beef already, um, but it was really fun just to see that trust and excitement increase um, because of how different we were and how that allowed us to connect with one another. And I really just think that's important. Now, I mean, I think this goes back to when I said earlier, sometimes we like to fight against each other. Um, you know, some people get upset, grass finished versus grain finished, grocery store bought beef versus buying direct from consumer. Um, as long as you are marketing in a way that is helping the consumer build trust in the beef supply, not putting others down, um, and just finding that unique connection point to build beef demand, I think that's super important. I think it's going to take all kinds of stories, all kinds of people to connect with the consumer and build beef demand. And when I say build beef demand, I really think it all comes back down to trust and allowing consumers to know that there's an option for them. There's a lot of consumers are concerned about sustainability, where their food comes from, and they want to know that story. So however we can tell that, however we can connect with them, that's what matters. We're the 1%. There's 99% out there that we can connect with. We can't all do it in the same form or fashion and reach everyone. So that's why I really think it's going to take all kinds of kinds. It's going to take large scale producers who can get that beef into grocery stores and serve a larger audience. And it's going to take some smaller producers who their best business model is selling direct to consumer beef. And so I think that's just something to keep in mind. I've really been inspired over the last five years by the wide variety of producers I've been able to talk to, whether they're large or small, sixth generation or first generation. Each kind of producer brings a different uniqueness, talent, skill set, and open mind to the table. That's incredibly valuable in whether that's trying to improve our beef industry, trying to build trust with consumers and beef demand, whatever it may be. And so that's point number one is that it's going to take all kinds of kinds. Number two, you learn something from everyone. And that was one of my main reasons for starting the podcast too. I have always believed that we learn something from everyone, whether they are inside the industry or outside of the industry, whether they are first generation or sixth generation, whether we agree with them or we do not agree with them. If you've listened to me long enough or <laughs> follow my social media post, you know I actually like to listen to podcasts and read articles that I don't fully agree with because it stretches my mind. Um, we can also learn what to do, but more importantly, what not to do or what to try. It all comes down to this bigger perspective that by creating more connections, we can open our mind to so many different opportunities that may either benefit our operation. And if they aren't right for our operation, maybe in the future, it's something you can mention to someone else to improve theirs. And I think that's really valuable in and of itself. If we can put our egos aside and recognize that every person we meet, every encounter we have can be a learning opportunity. It depends on how you choose to frame it. That was number two. On to number three, there's no such thing as an average Joe. I started interviewing a lot more producers than maybe industry professionals. And to this day, those are some of my favorite interviews. And it's something I want to work towards again is doing a few more of those producer interviews. But what's interesting is when I would ask people to be on my show, they'd say, well, there's nothing special about my story. I don't have anything to share that's different than the next guy. And yet during every conversation, I found that to be so wrong because each producer almost has their own unique passion and skill set. 
And that's because I truly believe, and I say this in one of my keynotes, that because we all have unique experiences, we look at all situations in a different lens, and that creates the uniqueness in passion and skill sets, et cetera. And no one can do something quite like you. Each person is going to look at a task and do it slightly differently, whether even that's just how they think about it in their mind, how they carry it out, et cetera. And so with that, I don't believe there can be an average or an average Joe. I think every rancher out there is the true leader. I believe every rancher out there is making a difference and they're doing it in the best way they are capable when they are using their own unique talents and passions to connect with others, to sell bulls, to sell beef, to sell calves, to graze the land differently, to um, improve their natural resources. Maybe they're adding on alternative revenue streams, whatever it may be. I just don't believe there's an average Joe. And every time I talk to a producer, this belief gets stronger and stronger inside of me. Number four, times are supposed to change. It's about how you hang on and enjoy the ride or the cycle. So I think sometimes it's hard um, because we live in such, we live out such a challenging business and lifestyle where the two are really married together. And because it's challenging and we deal with so many uncontrollables and biological factors, it can be easy to fall into the victim mentality or get really, and I don't, maybe victim mentality is not the right word, but we can get really upset with the weather, the cattle markets and other uncontrollable factors. And it's a capital intensive business. There's a lot of stress with it and that can make sense. But when I talk to more seasoned ranchers and industry professionals who study some of these trends, um, a lot of it they talk about is a cycle. We talk about the cattle markets as a cycle. Um, weather can come in a cycle. Um, it's not that you're ever going to avoid a drought. It's how you can be prepared when it happens, correct? Same thing with a few other things. I mean, those are risk. We talk about risk management for some of this stuff. And I think that's just important to keep in mind that some things are inevitable. We can only control what we control. It's how we choose to look at it and how we choose to hang on and find joy in that ride and in those changes, even though they are challenging. And maybe that joy might show up on the other side, but I really think there are a lot of cattle producers who are great examples of it, and that's why I bring it up, but I think it all comes down to how do you view these times that are supposed to change? Nothing's meant to stay the same, um, and I think that's just important to remember. Sometimes we want to stay stuck in the good times, but how would we know that they're good times if we've never gone through bad times as well? And I think that's important to remember is to just keep that positive attitude when you can and do what you can to enjoy that ride. And number five, ranchers are the leaders of this world. And this is a post that I put up on social media, and I'm going to take some time to pull that up and I'm going to read it to you because it is something that I really believe and I want to share more of. And here's what I mean when I say ranchers are the true leaders of the world. I believe cattlemen and women are the true leaders of the world. We know the importance of operating a profitable business, but still act for the greater good. We know there is more we can't control than we can control. So we make the most of the situation by working with mother nature to the best of our ability. This makes continuous learning and improvements unquestionable in our minds. It is simply a part of our plan to do things better each day. While the well-being of cattle and resources always comes first and creates long hours, somehow we still find time to serve our families, communities, nation, and the world. We don't take our job lightly as we feel the weight of our responsibility every single day. We know our actions impact our business, family, community, and the world. 
We do more than provide a nutrient-dense protein source, along with the hundreds of byproducts for the world. We set the tone for how to care for God's creations and leave this world better than we found it. And that's something that has really come to me over the last five years. I came up with that probably a month or so ago. Um, and I really just want to share that with you all. Now I'm curious, um, those of you who have been longtime listeners, maybe your new listeners, I would be curious to hear like what one of your takeaways was, um, either from your favorite episode or from your years in the beef industry. And so I would encourage you to go to my social media and message me, um, comment on one of my posts, share it in a story. Be sure to tag me in it because that's the best way for me to find information from you guys. But with that, those are my lessons learned after five years of podcasting. And to recap it, um, it's going to take all kinds of kinds. You learn something from everyone. There's no such thing as an average Joe. Yes, even you, you're not an average Joe or Jill. Times are supposed to change. So hang on and enjoy the ride and find creative ways to come out on top. And remember, ranchers are the true leaders of this world or cattlemen and cattle women are the true leaders of this world. With that, remember to head to my website or social media, message me, let me know your feedback, connect with me somehow. Have a great day and happy ranching, folks.